The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Gichigumi. Superior, they say, never gives up her dead when the gales of November come early. An air and sea search is continuing for possible survivors of the Edmund Fitzgerald, a 729-foot ore carrier, which apparently broke apart and sunk last night on Lake Superior. The ship and its 29-man crew vanished in a storm with 80-mile-an-hour winds and wave heights up to 25 feet. All that has been found is an oil slick and some debris. The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Gichigumi. The lake, it is said, never gives up her dead when the skies of November turn gloomy. With a load of iron ore, 26,000 tons more than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed empty, that good ship and true was a bone to be chewed when the gales of November came early. The ship was the pride of the American side, coming back from some mill in Wisconsin. As the big freighters go, it was bigger than most, with a crew and a captain well seasoned. Concluding some terms with a couple of steel firms, when they left fully loaded for Cleveland, and later that night, when the ship's bell rang, could it be the north wind they'd been feeling? The wind in the wires made a tattletale sound, and a wave broke over the railing. And every man knew, as the captain did too, twas the witch of November come stealing. The dawn came late, and the breakfast had to wait when the gales of November came slashing. When afternoon came, it was freezing rain in the face of a hurricane west wind. When supper time came, the old cook came on deck, saying, fellows, it's too rough to feed ya. At 7 p.m., a main hatchway caved in. He said, fellas, it's been good to know ya. The captain wired in, he had water coming in. The good ship and crew was in peril. And later that night, when his lights went out of sight, came the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Does anyone know where the love of God goes? When the words turn the minutes to hours, the searchers all say they'd have made Whitefish Bay if they'd 15 more miles behind her. They might have split up or they might have capsized. They may have broken deep and took water. And all that remains is the faces and the names of the wives and the sons and the daughters. Lake Huron rolls, Superior sings in the ruins of her ice water mansion. Old Michigan steams like a young man's dreams. The islands and the bays are for sportsmen. And farther below Lake Ontario takes in what Lake Erie can send her. And the iron boats go, as the mariners all know, with the gales of November remembered. In a musty old hall in Detroit they prayed, in the Maritime Sailors' Cathedral. The church bell chimed till it rang twenty-nine times for each man on the Edmund Fitzgerald. The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Kichigumi. Superior, they say, never gives up her dead when the gales of November come early.
The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Gichigumi. Superior, they say, never gives up her dead when the gales of November come early.